What's up guys? We're gonna take a little break from all this show related stuff today and we're gonna do something a little bit different. Let's go. Okay, like I said, we're gonna do something a little different in this video, but it's gonna be a lot more fun. We're going to build a ballista. That's right, we're gonna build a ballista. For you young folks out there that may not even know what a ballista is, it's a medieval siege weapon they use to hurl projectiles at the enemy. Um, now the one we're gonna build is gonna look a lot like a crossbow, and it's pretty much well known for throwing things like spears and arrows and that sort of thing. Um, but it actually started out being able to chunk stones, cannonballs, fireballs, and the occasional human head. Okay, so I don't have any diagrams or I don't have any blueprints of how ballista is supposed to be built. So is it going to be authentic? Of course not, but we're still going to figure it out. I'm a pretty good engineer. I have an idea how a couple things work. We're just going to wing it. This project will be more woodcraft than it will be bushcraft, but it'll still be semi-primitive because we're talking about medieval siege weapons. Um, I'm gonna move this build kind of up to the backyard where I have some leftover wood laying around that I was using on a different project. Um, I do have different pieces of metal that I can use to fabricate some parts because there's no doubt I'm not gonna have everything that I need for this. Um, but more importantly, I'll be close to some power tools which is gonna speed this process up where we can get on to the good part and that's shooting stuff. Okay, so it's likely that there's about three different scenarios that happen here. Scenario one, Everything goes off perfectly, my design is good, everything works like it's supposed to. Hmm, maybe, I kind of doubt it. Scenario number two, my design is good, but the material that I've used just won't hold up. Cause I, after all, only got like, killed dried pine, and I think there might be some treated pine up there, and I'm just using whatever ropes I have access to. Um, scenario number three, the whole thing explodes in a mass of twisted metal and wood and splinters and the bolt projects off to the side and shoots me through the lungs and I fall out dead on the forest floor and bleed out. Mm, let's hope that doesn't happen. But either way, I'm gonna be rolling the camera and it should at least be mildly entertaining. Oh, and I'm gonna time lapse through a lot of this build because it's not a tutorial and I just wanna get on with shooting some stuff, so let's go. I had to do some part improvising about like I expected because I didn't have everything I needed. But ultimately we have a finished product and turns out about like scenario number two that I had mentioned. The design is good, but the wood just wouldn't hold up, so I had to spend a little bit of time reinforcing the corners with some angle iron and adding another layer of 2x6s on there. Um, it actually made a lot more power than I expected. I kind of underestimated what kind of power you could get out of those ropes. Um, <clears throat> Now, as you can see, the, the arrows are just regular wooden dowels. I had to go pick those up. So ultimately, I did end up spending some money on this project. Not that I was totally opposed to spending money on this project, but I just thought I had enough materials laying around that I could do the whole thing. 
without it. Um, but some improvising, like these, these fletchings on these darts, that was a plastic picnic plate. Um, several plastic picnic plates. They were about 94 cents. Um, clean down to the arrow, the arrow tips, which, you know, are not the great, but not, not that great. That's the best thing that I could find. And those actually used to be door stops. Um, I wanted to build a cart with wheels on it. That way it can kind of be like, you know, you rolled it around type of thing, rolled it up behind the fire line. But I actually run out of lumber, so I just kind of made a, a static setup and it turns out it looks pretty cool. Um, guys might recognize like toilet flanges on top that I had to reinforce because it actually made so much power that those really need to be need to be metal, but it's hard to find parts for a, for a ballista, you know? I don't know any Romans or any Greek people, so. Um, yeah, but anyway, so you crank those up, drop a pin through to hold it in place, and that's what makes its power. Um, the trigger mechanism is pretty, pretty simple. It's ultimately a, you know, that was a railroad spike, which I drilled a hole in, rounded the inside off where it didn't cut through the rope and you push it down, flip that up and that's kind of what, that's kind of what holds your trigger in place. Use the crank back here to crank it back. And when you get ready to fire it, you just pull that lever. Now that's something similar to the way they were designed back in the day. They didn't use angle iron. They um, used a windless type of <clears throat> winch back here as opposed to like a ratchet. That's a ratchet strap that was broken that I kind of repurposed. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's see what it is some stuff. And the target we are going for way down there let's walk down there let's step it off to yardage All right, so that's about 38, 40 yards, somewhere around in there. Um, there's one of the picnic plates like I was talking about that I use for the fletchings. Um, let's just see if we can hit it. Okay, now the best that I can tell, they didn't have a real sophisticated aiming system on these things. There's so many variables involved, like how much tension is on the ropes, um, the angle that you have it at, how far you have it pulled back um you know i'm i'm guessing that having them in balance as far as the tension on the ropes <clears throat> um so there's just lots of different variables variables i think it was more of a point and shoot type of thing and just get a bunch of numbers down range to hit some of the enemy I do love that sound. It's so maniacal sounding. Oh. That was a close one, but it was a miss. Reload!
I gotta reload. We're gonna hit this time. I'll call that good enough. Okay, folks, there we have it. Not the most sophisticated aiming system yet. Um, but I'll keep tinkering with it and see if we can get it a little bit closer and figure out a way to effectively aim this thing consistently. Um, now, I didn't totally create this for no reason. Of course, it's a lot of fun, but I'm planning on setting up a walk and shoot trail out here. Kind of primitive archery is the is the norm for that but i wanted to put a few things on it that people don't get a whole lot of opportunity to fire and this being one of them i'll maybe put a trebuchet up and a regular catapult also um just kind of give you a little bit of something different um you also if you happen to be going out to keith sears at ramshackle homestead for amos rodriguez's um bow making class i'm going to have it out there also and we'll shoot around with it a little bit but i still have some things to work on um, my fletchings were busting all over the place so that's not a very good fletching material uh, i think maybe go with something more like more rubbery that way it can have a little play and a couple of my tips broke but i didn't figure those were going to last very long anyway that's all i got for you guys today see you next time